I, if that's what I said, I guess we'll leave it alone. But <laughs> yeah, uh, it makes sense if you were here at least, uh, because we were in the middle of a discussion about uh, the, the uh, state authorization statute, which includes that language. And uh, well, I'll leave it up. Leave it alone then. It's probably not the best English in the world, but then none of us ever do when we're speaking. Uh, fifth paragraph, uh, second line, first word, neighbor, should be neighbors. Uh, page five, first paragraph, second to last line. Oops, word misspelling? Unappreciative, yeah, yeah. just a spelling. Nothing major. Uh, page seven, Amy Bell Siegel, that's two words, B-E-L-L, -L, capital S. E G A L. I'm sorry, where are you? On page seven, mm -hmm. uh, last paragraph. At the bottom? Yeah, and then there's several places. Oh, the, the name you mean? What, yeah, her name. Tell me how it should be again? It should be Bell Siegel, two words. Two words. L L S E G A L. Several places on page eight that need changing. Same problem? Yeah. And then page nine. Uh, Aubrey's bought it at auction. It would be the second paragraph under the letter and uh, uh, Ronald Aubrey's word at should be added. Third sentence down, mm -hmm. Aubrey's bought it at. The next paragraph, um, it's six by 12. It should, should be slip six slash 12. Six 12 pitch, you mean? Six 12 pitch, yeah. yeah. That's all I have. Geez, you really used the microscope, didn't you? <laughs> Anybody else have any suggestions or corrections? If not, there's a motion to approve the minutes as uh, modified by uh, Bruce's suggestions. All those in favor? Anybody opposed? I see none. Consider them adopted. Next item on the agenda is old business. Uh, I guess it doesn't matter, Bruce, but I, uh, I didn't know why you put this, uh, the page item, under new business. Well, I noticed that. I, I, <laughs> Julie came back off, a, off, off from a maternity leave and um, she wasn't aware. did this for me. And yeah, okay. So the first and only item under old business, uh, if the agenda were correct, would be uh, to hear the appeal of Mary Page, 172 Two Lights Road, tax map U15, lot. 05 for a front property line, Beacon Lane, variance of 24 feet from the required 30 feet, and a front property line, Two Lights Road, variance of 12 feet from the required 30 feet to construct additions to the existing single family dwelling. This item had been tabled at the last meeting at the request of the applicant and uh, is now open for discussion. Yes, sir. Thank you, Excuse Mr. Me. Chairman. Excuse me, yeah. do we have to vote to take it off the, uh, off the table? Uh, good point. And then the other question is, uh, there was a communication requesting a, a, a basically a site walk of the property. Do we want to discuss yeah. that before we take it off the table uh, or after? I was going to deal with it later and let them present their uh, okay. intentions and then, then deal. Then I'll make a motion to take it off the table. Thank you very much. Is there a second? All those in favor? Now that I've been properly chastised, go right ahead. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members of the board, good evening. My name is Michael Traster. For the record, that's spelled T-R-A-I-S-T-E-R, -E and I'm a lawyer in, in Portland with the firm Murray Plum and Murray. Together with John Bannon, I represent the applicants in this matter, Roland and Mary Page, and I will be speaking this evening uh, in favor of the application for a variance. Uh, before I begin, I'd like to introduce Mr. Zach Davis, who's sitting at the back of the room there. He is uh, the builder uh, working with the Pages, and, uh, and sitting next to Mr. Davis is Mrs. Page's sister, Teresa Cummings, who's a resident of Scarborough. I should note that the Pages are not here this evening because they are residents of Minnesota, and given that they were here just uh, a few weeks ago at the end of June, uh, in the cost associated with coming back to a second hearing. They've asked me to stand in for them and speak, speak on their behalf. Uh, before I begin, there are a couple of items I would like to, uh, with the board's permission, uh, submit uh, for entry into the record. The first item I have is a memorandum which my firm has pre prepared setting forth the page's position in this matter. Uh, 
I have to ask now back to the point that Mr. Laurie tried to raise earlier off the record. Uh, it's very difficult for this board to deal with something that gets dropped on at the evening of the meeting, uh, whether this or any other documents you're going to present. Uh, and given that there was a month between the two meetings, which month was specifically, I thought, set aside to allow the applicant to reevaluate the situation after listening to the board discussion and perhaps respond with some uh, additional information or alternative proposals or whatever might come to mind. I'm not happy about getting stuff dropped on us or on any other parties at 7.15 on uh, the evening of the event here. Yes, Mr. Chairman, the reason why this is being submitted now is, is since the last hearing, we have uh, been in a, in a process with the Lakemans trying to see if we could resolve this matter and discussions were ongoing as, as recently as last week. And so this, the necessity for this did not become apparent until just recently. I would also add that all, all this memorandum is, is, is a written record of what I'll be uh, stating to the board this evening. And I just think for accuracy and completeness purposes, it would be appropriate uh, to have this as part of the administrative record. All right, well, let's put it this way. I'll, I'll be open to anything that you want to provide or testify to, but I'll be equally open to uh, other parties, or for that matter, board members, asking that the matter be tabled again for proper consideration. And we'll deal with that when and if that moment arises. Just as long as I'm putting you on notice, okay? Okay. Uh, go ahead. Um, I guess I'm slightly confused. Is, is this being accepted? Go right ahead. Uh, have you provided a copy to Mr. Lorry or anybody yes, else? I, okay. I provided a copy to Mr. Lorry uh, just prior to the meeting. It is, it is true that he just received that recently. I also have individual copies uh, for each of the members of the board to the extent they would like to review this during the course of the hearing this evening. Excuse me, I've been here briefly on this issue. Sure. Uh, like Mr. Traster, I wasn't at the last meeting, but we each had an opportunity to listen to at least portions of the tape of the meeting. And you, I wouldn't say chastised, but uh, certainly you expressed displeasure at the fact that Mr. Danielson submitted stuff late at the last meeting. Yes. And I took that to heart, and I called the town last Friday to ask, you know, when I was retained last week, I called the town to find out when the package was going out to make sure that if we had something to submit that we got it in time for the package. And I was told that it had already gone at the time, at which point I didn't write anything uh, equivalent to what's being suggested here. And I've had only a couple of minutes to skim through this, and there is some substantive new evidence. To accept the new evidence, you really have to reopen the public hearing, which you know isn't. <laughs> I, I put it, uh, you know, it isn't just a matter of accepting the documents. You have to reopen the public hearing and consider them and allow us to comment on them, which we're not really prepared to do today with the new plans. I can tell you that we will be opposed to the new plan as we are to the old plan. But in terms of doing any kind of analysis of the effect of the new plan as opposed to the old plan on my clients, we're not prepared to do that tonight. I understand that. And it may turn out the board won't be prepared to act on it either for the same reason. But I prefer to press on ahead, at least get the information out as best we can, and let the board deal with what it wants to do with that information later. And I certainly understand your position and would invite you to remake it in a more formal way later if you still choose to do so. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, by the way, the public hearing is reopened uh, by virtue of the, having been tabled and a motion uh, and, and in a public session uh, tabled on television. And uh, this is a continuation of that gathering. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I would also like to add that the uh, Lakemans received a copy of the revised plan, not, not just prior to the hearing, but earlier today, and I've had several hours to review that and prepare. Well, I'm not sure that I agree that's adequate, but let's press on. Uh, let me just stop and see if there's any board member who's disagreed with what I just said, and if so, we'll talk about it. Are we talking a new, a new plan with a new design? Well, that's part of the problem. I want to see what is out there before uh, I or, in, far, in my opinion, the board makes any decision about what to do with the information. If it's a restatement of what they did before, that's one thing. If it's uh, new information, then we ought to yeah. well, have it's a chance been, to table it if you want yeah. to. It's, the, it's been the board's uh, position for as long as I've been on, which is four years, to, to not accept uh, new information after a certain time. And I think that uh, we've established it the Friday before or even the Wednesday before. Yeah. 
But if, if there's new, uh, new information and new design on this, I certainly would like to retable this so that uh, we can consider all the new information. I mean, I, I don't want to hear bits and pieces tonight uh, when there's a new plan of the house and a new design uh, to go along with it. I mean, that's my, my opinion. Uh, let's take a break for a second. Uh, other board members want to comment on that? Certainly open to uh, other ideas. In the absence of a resubmission, I I'm not really sure. Uh, to, my, to my mind, uh, if there was a new plan, it had to be open for the public comment and, and a new application submitted with, with new plans. And so since no new plan was submitted, I'm under the assumption that uh, they're coming back with the same design they had last time. Uh, and I'm willing to vote on it tonight because it's been brought up again. The applicant heard the board's concerns. He gave her uh, pages an opportunity to resubmit a new application uh, to preserve their application fee uh, and not have to come back a year later. So uh, in the absence of, new of a new application, I think we're just dealing with this right now. Yeah. Well, I think no, you're correct. If there is an application, and I think I agree with uh, Mr. Pichotti that it's totally out of order. Well, what, what, give me a little leeway here, Wade, because what I'm trying to get to is to find out what the hell is going on here, and then we'll decide. That's why I said if we could just understand what's being presented, then the board can decide, decide where you want to go from there. So give me a few minutes or give the applicant a few minutes. But I agree with what you said, Mr. Cronin, that, and I restated earlier that I think it was, I hope it was clear to the applicant at the time, and I realize you weren't here, that uh, the presentation as was made at the last meeting probably was going to be turned down. And in order to be helpful to the applicant, we invited her and she responded with a request to table it so that it wouldn't have to sit for a year to go back with the new information and see if there was some way to resolve these problems, either by design change or uh, discussion with the neighbors or whatever, with no assurances that anything would change. Uh, so I was somewhat surprised when I opened the envelope from the, from the uh, office last week and found basically nothing. And now you're coming in the evening of the event and telling the board that you're, as I understand it from Mr. Lurie, that you're presenting new information. And in that sense, I think his question about whether this is an appropriate public hearing may well be a valid one for us to think about. Uh, Mr. Uh -huh. Chairman, was my, the page's understanding from the last meeting, and frankly my understanding as well, I did view the video from the last hearing that the board had indicated that if the design were to be scaled back and was not going to be an increase in nonconformity, that the current application uh, would be sufficient and we could proceed on that basis. I'd also... Which is why I gave you some leeway, because I don't know what the hell you're proposing. Okay, so right. let's do that, and then we'll figure out where we go procedurally. I just wanted to put you on notice that this isn't necessarily going to be finished tonight. And uh, so why don't you go ahead and at least outline what it is the applicant uh, believes would be helpful, and then we can deal with this question down the road here. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mm -hmm. uh, well, to, just, just to begin, the, the, the issue before the matter before the board is the page's application for a variance pursuant to Section 1952 of the town ordinance and specifically we're seeking a variance from section 1961 specifically the setback requirements uh, there are 30 foot setback requirements applicable uh, to the zone within which the pages property is located and the problem that the pages have is that their lot is between two streets and it is at most 67 feet wide so obviously as you can see at, at best there's a seven foot uh, construction envelope which exists on that lot and I would I would submit that it's it's essentially impossible to do anything on that property without obtaining a variance from this board and, and that's why we're here tonight what the what the pages are seeking to do is to be able to um, obtain a reasonable return on their investment and to have a reasonable use of their property by modernizing uh, the existing structure on the house uh, on the property which by all accounts and I don't think this is, this is really in dispute. It is a blight on the neighborhood. Uh, there was an elderly woman living there previously, and uh, I don't think anyone would, would uh, take issue with the fact that, that the current structure is dilapidated and has fallen to serious disrepair. And, and that is, is frankly why all of the neighbors and all of the abutters, with the exception of the Lakemans who are here this evening, have uh, testified or have submitted a letter in enthusiastically supporting 
the Pages proposal, and several of those neighbors appeared at the last hearing on June 22nd and personally testified in favor of the proposal. Um, uh, at the last hearing, the board did table the Pages application. And as the Pages understood it, and as, as, as I've said is my understanding, the tabling was designed to allow the Pages to go back and see if they could meet some of, redesign the property to meet some of the concerns expressed by the board at the June 22nd hearing. Namely, whether the structure could be redesigned so as to be uh, set back more off of Beacon Lane, which is a, a right of way going off of Two Lights Road, uh, and also to reduce the, the bulk of the structure. And that's what we have done. Uh, and, and that is the design which we are asking the board to, to approve this evening and to grant a variance with respect to that. Specifically, the redesign of the structure brings the, the east wing of the building back off of Beacon Lane to 11 feet back, whereas previously it was a six foot setback. And on the west side, we brought the building back 12 feet from Beacon Lane, whereas before it was also six feet. So we moved the structure back away from Beacon Lane, away from the Lakeman's house, which sits on the opposite side approximately on, of Beacon, uh, from the Page's property. In addition, in order to meet uh, the concerns expressed by the Lakeman's at the last hearing, uh, which, which centered around alleged water views, which which I must point out, we, we dispute that there are water views. Our property, the Pages property, sits on the highest point of land in the neighborhood, and their water views are extremely minimal from that, from that house on the highest point, and even then only exist in the depths of winter when there are no trees whatsoever on, on the trees. Uh, at this time, I would, I would like to submit two photographs in, into the record with the board's permission. One both of which were taken in December 98. One is, is simply a photo of the existing structure in question, and the other is a photo taken from the second story bedroom window of the Pages house, or the existing house at 172 Two Lights Road, uh, showing what minimal water views there are from that property. And I would also, with the board permission, like to circulate copies of both the memo that's been submitted as well as the photo copies of the photographs. Is Mr. Lurie getting these? Yeah, he's been provided with a copy, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Chair, could I have those originals for fire? Which ones? Before they get lost. The pictures? The original pictures yeah. and the uh, sure. original documents. You have no faith. What's that? Did so you have no faith? <laughs> uh, con continuing, Mr. Chairman, in addition to bringing the structure or the redesign back away from Beacon Lane, we have tried very hard to alleviate and address the Lakeman's concern regarding their alleged water views. As, as we understand it, the alleged views are to the east from the Lakeman's house. And as you can see from the, uh, the design attached as Exhibit A to our memo, what we've done is we've reduced the, the structure on the east side from a three-story addition to a one-story addition. So we've lowered that significantly to where now that addition would be four feet lower than the existing structure. The existing structure is 21 feet. The addition uh, in the area of concern with respect to the views would be 17 feet high. And uh, we've also then brought the garage around to the west side. So we have essentially uh, put, taken a three-story addition and turned it into a two-story addition on 
the west side, which would have a height no greater than the existing structure, and we have lowered the addition on the area in dispute to where it would be four feet lower than the existing structure. We have also reduced the footprint of the addition on the east side, uh, which is the side of concern. And I would, I would mention that Mr. Davis is here to answer any more specific questions the board may have about the redesign and the addition in general. I would also like to note for the board that since its hearing, uh, we have tried very hard to address the board's concern, and not only the board's concern, but we have tried very hard to work with the Lakemans to address their concern. And in that regard, uh, the pages invited the Lakemans to meet with their attorney, Mr. Bannon, of my office, to see if a design could be uh, created in which would which would alleviate uh, the Lakemans' concerns and which would. Uh, essentially make everybody happy, for lack of a better word. Uh, the Lakemans refused to meet with us unless their attorney was present, which is understandable, but refused unless the Pages paid the cost to have their attorney there. And the Pages did that. They went the extra mile. We paid for the Lakemans' attorney, Mr. Danielson, to come to the meeting, to sit down. And this was on June 22nd, just last week, to see if a, a design could be developed where the Lakemans' concerns could be addressed. At that meeting, the Lakemans uh, refused to consider any expansion of the Page property on the basis that any expansion might result in a large family moving into the property one day. And citing private, privacy concerns, they did not want that to happen. And so as we sit here today, as I said, I believe the Pages have gone the extra mile, have tried very hard to work with the Lakemans, but the Lakemans in turn have, have offered no ideas whatsoever, and, and I, I'd be very interested to see what ideas, if any, the Lakemans may have uh, uh, with respect to a design that could accommodate the Pages' need as well as alleviate their concerns as well. Now, as I say, we've, we've essentially done two things with the redesign uh, pursuant to the board's concern. We've taken it back from Beacon Lane, and we've lowered the structure uh, with respect to the area in which the alleged views, uh, uh, water views exist. I will say that, uh, again, I, I must reiterate, we dispute that there are water views. As you can see from the photo we've submitted, the views from the, from the Pages property from the second floor, which exist only in the winter, are minimal at best. I think everyone would agree with that. And the, and the Lakeman's property sits on the other side of Beacon Lane, lower than the Page's property. Uh, and, and I think, again, that the, the, the pictures are very telling. I also think that the photographs are very telling uh, with respect to the issue of property values. I don't think it can re reasonably be contested that modernizing that structure, bringing it up uh, to, to a level where where a typical American family could occupy that home in 1999 would be reducing anybody's property values. It's only going to increase the, the, the property values in the neighborhood, and that's why all neighbors have, have spoken in favor of the, of the uh, development and the application before the board. Uh, I also, at this point, would, would like to reiterate the Page's request uh, that the board do a site view. Uh, I, myself, uh, went and viewed the property on Sunday afternoon, and I think it's very helpful to understand uh, what the issues are and, and, and the, uh, the matters before the board to actually view the property and to see what we're talking about and to see uh, the slope of the land and, and what views or lack of views uh, exist. I, I don't know if the members of the board have done that, but I'd like to re reiterate the, uh, the request that Mrs. Page made pursuant to a letter to the board to do so. Let me just insert there that each of the board members here has been to that site at least twice, uh, but I had no interest in having a board meeting up there if that's what was intended. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As I've said, we, we tried very hard to, to redesign uh, the addition uh, to, to meet the board's and the Lakeman's concern. Um, we also believe that under the uh, criteria of the ordinance, uh, which, which tracks main law uh, regarding variance identically, that the pages uh, are entitled to a variance from this board. Uh, pursuant to the ordinance, uh, which tracks 30 AM RSA 4353, there are four 
uh, criteria which must, must be met uh, in order for the pages to be entitled to a variance. And we believe we meet all four of those criteria. First, uh, as set forth in uh, section 19.5.2 of the ordinance, the land in question must not be able to yield a reasonable return unless a variance is granted. And on this issue, I would uh, cite for the board the main Supreme Court case of Marshy v. Town of Scarborough. And in that case, the main Supreme Court held that when an owner can show that a residence of reasonable size cannot be uh, developed uh, or constructed absent a variance, the owner has demonstrated that the property cannot yield a reasonable return. That's exactly what we have in the Pages case. We have a structure that's approximately 927 feet. I don't think that anybody would argue that that, by current standards, is an adequate home for a typical American family. I would also note that uh, the Lakemans apparently wouldn't agree with that either, because when they bought their home, the home was only 1,200 square feet. And what did they do? They built an 800-foot addition. So I think that that implicitly recognizes that, that the house in question uh, is, is, cannot yield a reasonable return. It's not reasonable to require the pages or anyone else to live in a structure 900 square feet. May I make a comment to you in response to your comment? Uh, not right now, please. <laughs> okay, I want to do it. On yeah, the if point. you have a question, that'll be fine. But, uh, uh, may I ask, may I ask a question? Then? Sure. Um, you quoted that um, without a variance, the property owner cannot build a residence of reasonably inhabitable size. The property owner has demonstrated that the property cannot yield a reasonable return unless a variance is granted. Um, that does not imply that it has to be a reasonable, reasonably inhabitable size for a family, does it? There are many, many homes owned by single people. Uh, I, think, yeah, I think you've extrapolated here. Uh, well, I, we think, I think I properly cited that case for the proposition it stands for. The, the, I would certainly agree with you that reasonable return does not mean maximum return. But in this case, you have, you have a, a lot which is only 67 feet wide. There's only a seven foot building envelope that exists there. And there have been uh, the Marshy case as well as the cases cited within that case as well as some other main Supreme Court cases where the, the court has said that, that when you, you, you you have such a narrow building space, and the only way a reasonable structure uh, can be constructed is with a variance, that the va essentially that the variance should be granted. And my, and my question to you is whether or not the Supreme Court's wording of a residence of reasonably inhabitable size can be reasonably extrapolated to mean it has to be a family residence as opposed to a residence for one or two people. Well, the, the only use that this law can be put is to residential use. And I don't think that the law should require that only uh, a single person live on the property. I think it's reasonable that the law will allow a typical family, in this case the pages have two children, that's a, that's a family of four. I think that a reasonable return or beneficial use of that property would, would allow for or would demand that that, that a structure be able to exist which can accommodate that, that level of a family. Do you think the law requires that every residence be suitable for a family? I think that in this case, given, given the surrounding neighborhood, given the area dimensions of the lot, that the, the most logical and the most reasonable use of that property is for, for a typical family. And, and that's what the pages are, are asking to be able to do. <clears throat> Uh, if I came to you on the, in a, in a out, outside of a separate case that you're representing and asked you whether or not what you just said holds true, even though the people, for whatever reason, did not uh, talk to the town, did not apparently get information about the septic system or about the variance requirements or the setback requirements, went ahead and purchased anyway, knowing that the house would be inadequate for them. Uh, does that hold true too? Do you think in a, in a your sort of sweeping statement about? Uh, well, Mr. Chairman, I think your question goes to the fourth criteria as to whether the the hardship in question is self-imposed, and and I, I don't want to just regurgitate the memo we submitted, but the law court has uh, I keep calling it the law court, the Maine Supreme Court has been very clear on that issue as well. In the in the, it was first articulated in the case of Twig v. Town of Kennebunk, 1995 case out of the Maine Supreme Court, in which the court said that 
actual knowledge of uh, zoning restrictions, which I, I, I would uh, uh, note did not exist in this case. I believe Mrs. Page has testified at the last hearing that she, she had no uh, actual knowledge of what the requirements were. But, but that issue aside, even if she were to be held to what's called constructive knowledge, i.e., you should have known, uh, the, the main Supreme Court says that is not enough to create self, to to uh, deny a variance request on. Uh, that does not equal a self-imposed hardship. Uh, and, and I'll just quickly quote from a main Supreme Court in 1998, Rochelovi Town of Green. Knowledge, quote, knowledge of zoning ordinance restrictions by a purchaser of a non-conforming lot without more will hardly ever constitute a self-created hardship. And it went on to note that, that the, the old rule in which uh, that uh, often uh, would mean death for a variance request, has been, quote, altogether abandoned or modified into non-existence. So the mere, the mere fact that the pages bought the property uh, uh, and maybe should have known that, that they were going to need a variance does not, uh, is not a death knell for their variance request. Thank you, Mr. Tracy. Um, or were you completed with your presentation? Uh, I was just going to quickly address the, the final two criteria, which, which I really don't think uh, there should be any issue with respect to, to those. One is that, that the, the, uh, the property in question is unique and that the conditions the property is suffering under it does, not, uh, it does not exist on the other lots in the neighborhood. I don't think anybody uh, would, would uh, assert that, that they do. We've attached a copy of the town's tax map, which shows uh, the lot in question. A lot is, is, a, is a sliver lot, 67 feet wide at most. No other lot suffers from that, from that condition. Uh, and finally, that the granting of the variance will not alter the essential character, uh, character of the neighborhood. If the variance is granted, we'll simply be constructing a, a family dwelling for residential use consistent with the uh, rest of the neighborhood. Thank you, sir. Uh, any other board members have questions for Mr. Traster? Go ahead. It goes back to my original concern that uh, this is a substantial uh, uh, change in the original plan, and uh, I have a small uh, 8 by 14 page in front of me, and I cannot read the, the setbacks on it. Uh, I'm a little disturbed that tonight's the first time I see this, and because of that, uh, you know, I'm I'd like a little more explanation as to why we didn't get this earlier, and if we want to pursue or continue this uh, this application tonight. Uh, well, <clears throat> I, you uh, <laughs> you were the one that was uh, that were talking earlier about uh, continuing to hear this. Uh, yeah. What are your thoughts on this? Well, I don't know. I look for some guidance from Bruce here, but my view is, from a strictly legal point of view, that this is presumably less onerous uh, than the original proposal. So in, in a strictly legal sense, uh, we could probably act on this. But whether we want to act on it's another question. Uh, and I have some questions myself about uh, that I would like to have the town attorney look at just because Mr. Traster has raised issues which frankly are different than our past understand my past understanding at least of uh, several things. And I'm not saying you're wrong, but I'm not saying you're right either. I'd like to have another opinion on that. Uh, so for that reason alone, if not for the reasons that, that Mr. Fristacci raises, and there are legitimate reasons well, as well. Again, I need a clarification. The, what I'm looking at, actually, it's not, yeah, it's 8 by 11. Are we adding to both sides of the building now and not to just one side? That's correct. Yes, so we we're are. expanding the footprint that was presented to us last month. We have taken a three-story addition. But no, no, the, the overall footprint has been expanded. That is correct. And this is substantially So different. it's wider and shorter is a, is a shorthand way of putting it. But there's a greater percentage of the lot that's being yeah, covered. I hear what you're saying. Yeah. And, the, and the footprint of the, of the original building is being expanded. I understand what you're saying. By, by uh, well, a substantial amount. Yeah. So, I mean, to me, this is a substantially different application and I certainly don't want to vote on it tonight sure. with just the information presented to me. Now, last week, we, last month, we had a, a public hearing, 
and they saw an addition of, and I'm thinking it was, it was a 30 by, by 20. I don't know what the exact size was last week, but 20 by 20 last month. All right, so now we're going, and I can't read these numbers, and someone please help me out. Um, it looks like 20 by, 20 by 16 on one side, and 20 by 20 on the other. So you're talking 320 square feet, which is almost a 100% increase over what was presented last month. I would note that we have actually reduced the footprint on the east side addition from 2820 to 2016 mm -hmm. in an effort to uh, allay the Lakeman's concerns. All right, but you've increased it on the other side. That is true. Yes. And that's 20 by 20? So the, the point you're basically making, Mr. Fristassi, is that, yes, the impact may be in some ways viewed as less, but it's, it's different such that those who may have been interested previously and either attended or not attended the hearing were looking at what amounted to a different project in many ways and deserve the right to evaluate it, as does the board members. Is that a fair summary? Of they submitted a letter of endorsement mm -hmm. based on one plan, and yet another one comes back 30 days later mm -hmm. completely different. Do they endorse that? I mean, the, the comments were made that the neighbors wholeheartedly endorse this, and this was your opening remarks, they endorse the original plan, but I don't see any evidence they endorsed this plan. So my concern is that, that we do have a substantially different uh, a proposal request before us this evening, and I'd like to table it so that, that we can review this uh, for, another ma uh, for another month. Is that a motion? Well, no, I'm going to let other people make a suggestion, because if you mo make a motion, then it kind of shuts off other people's comments. All right. Uh, I'm sorry? My sister is called all Excuse me. If you're going to testify, I need you up here. And Point of order, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. I, I, I had some questions for the... Uh, let me just hear from Ms. Um, in regards your, to your Once you get your name on the record, please. Uh, I'm Teresa Cummings. I'm Mary's sister, and I live in Scarborough, and I've been a resident of Maine for 10 years. Thank you. Um, regarding your uh, question about do the neighbors know about this new plan, yes, they do. Uh, my sister has been in contact with all the neighbors uh, via telephone and uh, has discussed the plan with them and they have all agreed. So she, has, she didn't go ahead and have them sign another petition or anything like that, but she has talked to all of the neighbors that were here at the last uh, public meeting. I know that. May I ask a question? Please. Yes. If the neighbors know about it, I think it would have been appropriate for the board to know about it too. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. I think it would have been appropriate for the board to know about it too. If the neighbors know about it. The neighbors know about the changes in the plan? Sure, I understand that. Um, I, I know most of us, all of us, take this responsibility yeah, very I, seriously. I, I don't think my sister just planned. Let me, let me make a comment, man. Um, we take this responsibility very seriously. This is a very difficult case. We knew this last month. I spent a significant amount of time restudying and rereading all of this material, including a second visit to the site uh, to re examine it based on the plans I had in front of me. What you're telling me tonight is that was all wasted time and effort. That makes me very unhappy. Point of order, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Cronin. I see before me one application for a variance that states the dimensional variances that are requested. No other application for variance over and above than this has been submitted. And this is what I'm acting on today. I can, the board can vote to grant variance for part of it, all of it, or none of it. But as far as I'm concerned, this is the application that's before us, and that's my attitude. And I second Mr. Yeah. Scotty's concerns that I don't know what these other things are. They haven't been applied for. They're not part yeah. of a formal application for variance that's been submitted properly and, and properly advertised before the town. Mr. Chairman, through the uh, just a second, let me just get for the record, John, right back, uh, Bruce. I just want to get clearly for the record. There's been no other materials submitted to you in the way in the form of an amended application or additional information prior to the meeting tonight? No, and had I been aware that something was submitted, I would have required that it be on a legible okay. size for the board to review. Thank you. I'm sorry, Jeff. Does the applicant need a second 
variance request for the addition to the, well, what I'm looking at, the left side or the west, westerly west side of this also, Bruce? I mean, they, they're applying for the one on the easterly side, the lower side or the one on the right side if you're looking from Two Lights Road. Do they also need an application or a variance request for the one on the westerly side for this new plan? I, I don't know that that's the issue here, I, but I, I'll answer the question. Uh, if, if a variance application is advertised at a certain distance from property lines, it's been common practice of boards to allow changes as long as no, nothing was pulled closer to a property line and to allow a change under the original variance application and advertisement because one meeting carries on to the next meeting and those who got notice with the first meeting are well aware as, the, as everything tracks through. So under normal circumstances, we would not re-advertise unless the board uh, was concerned enough uh, that, that it was a substantial change that we, that we really need to get it out again. And that's, that, that would be the prerogative of the board. Mr. Chairman. So the answer would be that you need to look at it Again, I'm repeating just for confirmation, need to look at the issue from the standpoint of the impact on the side, on the, on the uh, setbacks, not the house itself per se, and what, so that it's gone in one direction or the other, up or down or whatever, is not the primary issue here, correct? Yes, the, okay. the advertisement is, is, doesn't really get into the nitty gritty of the application. It just sim merely states okay. yeah. the mi minimum distance that the, the application is, has been applied for, the applicant has applied for. Somebody said something. I yes, Mr. Chairman, I just, I just want to make a, a couple of, of points. Uh, first, I do have copies, uh, larger copies yeah. of, of the revised plan. Secondly, I, I do want to reiterate that, that the reason why the plan, uh, the, the structure has been redesigned and is, is being submitted now is pursuant to our understanding that's, that that's exactly what the board asked us to do. So we were trying to meet the board's concerns in redesigning it. Third. Uh, pursuant to the discussion at the last hearing, it was our understanding that no new application would be required pursuant to the comments uh, of the board as well as uh, what Mr. Smith referred to as common practice, uh, that no new application would be required as long as we were actually reducing the nonconformity. Finally, uh, the re the one, uh, another reason why uh, the board is just getting this now is that we have tried to work with the Lakemans as recently as last week to try to come up with a plan that would meet their their concerns, and ultimately, we had to go it alone. And so here we are today with a plan that we think more meets the board's concerns uh, and is satisfactory under the variance ordinance, and we would ask that, that the board proceed. Well, I understand all that, and I think the question about whether another application is needed is, it's a legitimate question Mr. Cronin raised, but still some question in our mind is whether it really is needed, and we'll have to resolve that for the future, but. Yeah, raise a point of information. But right. let me just finish my thought, if you would. But I, I think the problem we're having here, uh, sir, is that uh, the board is faced with looking at something that's significantly different than the one we looked at before. And as Mr. Keneally said, different than he envisioned when he went and visited the site, as did all of us a second time. And uh, uh, not to even mention the neighbors who I understand you tried to cooperate with and were not successful, but they have their rights as well. And so uh, you're, you're presenting us with a lot of information, not to mention plans of the wrong size, and uh, it's very difficult for us to deal with this in that, under that circumstance. And uh, so I, you know, I think it's, I'll allow the fact that you tried your best, but I think it would have been better to have called Bruce and said, let's set this aside for another month while we sort through all these details and we'll give you proper plans and so on to work with instead of having the board come out for a meeting in which this is the only agenda item we have to work on, to be quite honest with you. Um, now, Mr. Cronin, I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, this proposed garage on the southwest side of the property, uh, which is 12 feet from the Beacon Lane, that requires a variance, right, Bruce? The overall plan requires a variance. Okay. Each specific addition on either side, if you're advertising for a variance to that particular property line will cover anything that's beyond the point of advertisement. So, so under the letter of law, 
the board had everything been in place, the board could proceed with this change based on the advertisement, which, in, which my interpretation would be a legal advertisement for the variance to cover anything they may do on that law. But this wasn't the proposal of record. So you're saying that they could even make this garage instead of 20 feet wide in the westerly direction, 60, 80 feet wide. Uh, no, it would not no, that isn't what I'm saying. What I'm saying is the advertisement, generically speaking, will cover any variance situation that they may submit. If the board thinks this is a big enough change, then we, then you should table it. And I can either re-advertise fully uh, as if it's a new application, or, or I can re-advertise as old business. It makes no difference. Um. I await, I guess, a motion from somebody, but my sense is that the board is very uneasy at the moment uh, for two or three reasons, and my own uneasiness has to do with some of the legal questions that Mr. Uh, Traster has raised and that I'd like to have reviewed by someone on our payroll, and uh, there have been uh, obviously unease uneasiness on the part of the board members about the late arrival of this material, about the uh, neighbors and whether or not they have probably been notified and uh, testify. So uh, I'm going to give Mr. Laurie just a brief second here and then I'd like to let the board go with us where they want. If you want to go ahead and act on it, we can I'd, do that. I'll, I'll try and restrict my comments yeah. to the late submission and the substance of the late submission without it, and maybe not even the substance of the late submission. Let me just say that uh, we would prefer you not to table this. We think that uh, you already know enough about what was proposed last time and what, is, what would be proposed by the um, pages if they're given an opportunity to present something new, to know that it doesn't meet the ordinance requirements and I see no need to table it again. And I, I expect to be in Yellowstone. I'm not sure when your next meeting is, but next month I'm supposed to be in Yellowstone for a week and I... And Sorry, sure you're going to have to cancel that. <laughs> <laughs> I have to cancel my marriage first. Uh, the, um, let, let, me, let me say, uh, I, like most land use lawyers, wear different hats at different times. And sometimes I represent municipalities, sometimes I represent developers, and sometimes I represent um, uh, uh, opponents. In this case, I'm representing an opponent of a development. But um, I can tell you from my experience that a written amendment or application for amendment is absolutely essential if later on, uh, if you were to grant this thing, uh, later on you were to determine whether we're in compliance or not. I've seen these kinds of plans presented before and then later on the question comes up, what did the board actually approve? Uh, particularly, and I, and I understand the code enforcement officer is only talking about the advertisement problem. We're not concerned about the advertisement notice. We're here. Uh, the, uh, we know about it. Uh, in Ray Main Clean Fuel says that we can't object to the fact that the notice was no good. We're here. And we know what they're proposing, or we know what they're, uh, the papers that they're proposing here. We, don't, we, we have some trouble with the substance of what it, where it is. But uh, we, would, we would like you to dispose of this tonight. We would rather not have you table it, because I think on the merits it's very clear that you cannot grant this appeal uh, either under the old plan or under anything like what they're talking about. I suggest that what you should do tonight is to deal with what you have before you, which was applied for, dispose of that. If the applicant wants to withdraw, you gave the applicant the opportunity to withdraw and refile something new, they can certainly do that. But uh, the, uh, the, the bottom line is that we would like to see this particular appeal disposed of tonight. And I'd like to address the merits because I disagree 150% with everything that, uh, uh, that Mr. Traster said about those cases. And I think uh, it's very clear that you cannot grant this. I'd like to be heard on the merits afterwards if you, uh, as I hope, decide to deal with this tonight and deal with the application which was submitted and tabled <coughs> for tonight and not a new application which is unclear. Its substance remains unclear. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Laurie. Questions for him? Okay. Um, does anyone else who wishes to testify that since we've carried this this far, we might as well finish it? Uh, 
Let, let me say uh, that assuming uh, that you reopen the, the record for the purpose of accepting the evidence, if not the, app, the new application or whatever, uh, there is something I would like to submit, or a couple of things I would like to submit and make sure they're parts of the record. One of, it, one of which I believe is already part of the record. Um, uh, it's uh, the uh, application for subservice wastewater disposal system. It is. Uh, and the last meeting, uh, I did note that there was a lot of discussion that the rationale for having to move the garage was the location of the septic system. I'd like you to note, if you look at your application, I'd like you to note on it uh, that it is not a replacement system. It is an expanded system. That is because there are more bedrooms proposed and therefore a larger area and a different kind of system or larger area is required and a, uh, a reconstruction of what is there right now in terms of size uh, probably <coughs> or may, may or may not require even the relocation of the garage, which is the rationale for just about everything else which flows in this. The, the need for a septic system and the, uh, the desire to continue to have a garage despite the need to locate that seemed to be the theme of the prior meeting. And therefore, I'd just like to point, point that out before uh, we go on further. But that is part of the record already, apparently. The other thing which is new uh, is a letter which uh, I'd like to submit, and I'll read it to the board. Um, and I hadn't intended to submit it because I didn't think you were going to have and a reopening of the hearing tonight. Uh, it says, um, it's, it's a letter from David Scheffler, who is a real estate broker. And this goes directly to what Mr. Traster said about the, about the views and how significant the view is, the water view. Um, this is a letter written to Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Dan Lakeman. Uh, it says, on Friday, July 23, 1999, I visited your home for the purpose of evaluating the effect of a possible expansion of the property across the street. That property currently has a rather small footprint, which has enabled your property to enjoy a glimpse of the ocean when the leaves are off the trees. A glimpse of the ocean when the leaves are off the trees. Okay. How significant is that? He goes on to say, even though the view is somewhat limited, it certainly has a favorable effect on the value of your property. The loss of that view would impact the way in which your home would be marketed should you decide to sell it in the future. Homes are either waterfront, water view, including partial, or all other, three categories among brokers. Waterfront, water view, including partial, or all other. With the loss of your seasonal view, you would also lose potential buyers of water view homes. Please give me a call if I can give any help. <clears throat> now, can I ask you a question about that letter? Unfortunately, Mr. Shepler isn't here, so I can't ask him. Uh, are you prepared to comment on it? Uh, only that uh, the letter is to the effect that the marketing of property differs on whether it has a water view or not. And no matter how limited the water view is, even if it's only partial, uh, it's, it changes the category uh, in which it gets listed and therefore makes it more marketable. Doesn't necessarily, doesn't, uh, that doesn't always translate into an increase in cost, in, in value, but it certainly makes it more marketable, more, like, more easy to be sold, I think. But, um, uh, sorry. Go ahead, move on. I, you can't answer my question anyway. So I, I can't answer yeah. questions beyond that. I haven't, in fact, gone over the letter with Mr. Scheffler. Uh, the, uh, Mr. Lurie? Yeah. Uh, is the property uh, registered or listed as a Waterview home with the tax assessor's office? I doubt it. I don't know the answer to that, but I doubt it. The, the, the whole waterfront view issue is more or less irrelevant. I think that the reason why it came up was because there had been discussion of a new ordinance, which in one of the standards in the new ordinance would be uh, the detriment to abutting properties. Uh, and that's not the law. That's not what you have in effect right now, and uh, I only raise that issue because Mr. Tracer raised the issue, but I think that we could probably all agree that waterfront view is irrelevant to the criteria you have to decide this matter on, and you are required to decide it based on the ordinance criteria, not based on whether you would like to see this property reconstructed. 
the Lakemans want to see this property reconstructed. They don't like the house the way it is right now, believe me. And uh, they are not standing in the way of progress, which is the way it's being pro portrayed here. They, they have been made the bad guys, basically, uh, and been made to look like they're standing in the way of neighborhood improvement. This is something I have done and other <laughs> developers do when they, when, they, when they come in. I had a project not too long ago in Old Orchard could, Beach. Could we, we left cut property. that short? You were about to present some information to us I'm earlier. sorry. I presented the actual information. Uh, I'll testify. I'll, I'll comment later on on the legal arguments uh, and, uh, and the other arguments made by Mr. Traster afterwards, once you've decided whether you're going to go ahead with this or Thank not. You. Thank you. <sighs> Uh, I'll stop it at this point and turn to the board members. Uh, as I see it, uh, there is an application before you which you could choose to approve or deny based on the original, original submittal. You could choose to table it for more opportunity to review the information that was presented tonight. Uh, I'm a little uncomfortable about uh, myself about acting on this application the way it's in front of us now, as much for the legal issues that I'm not uh, totally comfortable with myself as for anything else. Because even though Mr. Laurie hasn't commented in detail, he's made it very clear that his, in his opinion, uh, Mr. Tracer's arguments are, you know, are he disagrees with them 150%. Uh, and taking that at face value, uh, and given the past direction the board has taken on some on several of these issues based on what I thought was advice from our attorney. Uh, I'm a little uneasy about it. Perhaps other members have a different reading of the situation and I would uh, entertain any discussion you want to have on the procedural issue now. Where do we go next? I, I share the discomfort. Uh, when I was studying this document this week in preparation for this hearing, it points out that uh, as far as the self-created hardship standard, that uh, the courts do consider such a person as having a self-created hardship when they buy a property that's, that's non-conforming and um, want to try to enlarge it. So the evidence or the uh, court ruling presented by Mr. Traster is at variance with this, and I would appreciate having town council resolve it for us. Some of the stuff in that book goes back a ways, I have to be honest I, with you. No, I realize. It may not be taking into account a more recent court decision, no, I, but I, I, I realize that. appreciate your pointing that out because I wasn't yeah. aware of the yeah. contradiction there. Um, anyone else want to say anything else? Uh, my inclination uh, in deference to the uh, uh, and their attorney fees, uh, having them come back again uh, when the applicant was clearly appraised of the board's sentiments and could have submitted a new application. I'm prepared to act on this application uh, as stated for the existing ones and then uh, we can vote it up or down. I think if uh, the applicant wants something for the southwest side of the property, they can ask for another, another variance. I, I don't think that, there's no application for, to my mind, uh, uh, a variance request for obstruction of property on the southwest side of the property. There is an application before us which has been, which has been taken off, off the table and, and, and said, here's my request for variance, and I'm prepared to act on that tonight. Bruce, let me go back to your earlier comment about uh, the application. And actually, I made a similar comment earlier than that even, uh, but you basically said that provided that changes did not, in fact, encroach further into the setback and, in fact, encroach less, that you felt comfortable that no new application was needed and no formal notice was required. I don't want to put words in your mouth. That's what I heard you say. That's been, uh, that's been my... Um, uh, that's been the history of the boards that I've worked through through okay. the years. And, and that's the policy we've followed since I've been here. However, something Mr. Conan just said caused me to perhaps think about it a little bit differently, and that is in this instance, in an attempt to resolve one problem on this property with some creative ingenuity, the applicant has, 
in effect created a, an, an obstruction, if you will, a visible pl uh, mark on the land with the Western addition that uh, while it's within the uh, existing building line in terms of setback, in fact, it's better than that. Uh, it just wasn't there in any previous discussion or plans that we or the public have have had, and uh, obviously is going to look different from everybody's perspective. Obviously, from the applicant's point of view, better uh, what they would hope. Uh, does that? I'm just babbling here, but I'm just trying to sort through some new information. And I'm not so sure that we'd be facing this dilemma had the applicant submitted the 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 new proposal or the revised proposal to the board for their packets so that the board could review that. I'm yeah. not sure that we'd be facing this argument at all tonight. Okay. And I think that's the issue, uh, no more, no less. Okay. Um, so I've, I've heard two, I'm done with the public, Mr. Tracy. I've heard two perspectives presented here and uh, we can, get a motion which directs either way. One of, one of them, as I hear it, would be a tabling motion to bring it back, having provided more opportunity for the public and the board to consider it, and would be on our August uh, meeting, which we're holding in Yellowstone. Uh, and the other, Mr. Cronin has suggested, would be a motion to deal with what's directly in front of us from carryover of the last meeting, if I understood you. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so one of the other motions ought to be put out. We'll deal with it and then see where that leads us. Uh, Mr. Chairman, what are we considering? Are we considering the new pro pro uh, proposal presented to us this evening? Is that what we should be considering and throw out what we, what we learned about last, last month? If, so. if we are considering the new proposal and if we're going, to, going forward, then I'd like to hear from the person that's going to do some work to clarify some questions on my, you know, for my personal uh, benefit, but if that's if that's what we're going to do. Well, what I'm trying oh. to deal here with, and, uh, and forgive me for swimming around here because I'm not really clear in my own well, mind I'm trying to how help to deal you with this, but I'm trying to help you out, and I just no, I, go I ahead. understand that, and I appreciate it, and you're not, <laughs> and not because you're not helping, it's because I'm not clear. Uh, the problem, as I see it, is is we have a procedural issue which we have and should deal with, and in fact, I've probably gone further into factual information than ordinarily I would want to have allowed. Uh, and there have been a lot of questions raised that really have to do with procedural issues. Uh, and, and for example, if uh, in fact the uh, issue about in effect self-denial, uh, as it was put earlier, that the applicant created for themselves uh, was interpreted one way, I would have a very different perspective on the procedural issue than, or on the whole issue than than if it was presented another way. And I want some legal guidance for that. Uh, right. I don't even have to get to the facts to get that problem answered for me before I'm prepared to go forward. So I'm not sure how each individual feels about that. I heard Jack suggesting a similar concern, but, um, and Ann hasn't spoken to this yet, but. So I'm trying to deal with the procedural issue right now, and then if we get beyond that, then let's deal with the facts. Uh, but your question is a legitimate one. What's you know what's before us, and that's what's making well, me uncomfortable. You know, I think it was almost an hour ago. I suggested tabling this because of the new information that was presented to us. We've spent an hour on this, and this is supposed to be a short agenda, um, and we're no farther ahead now because we're still discussing and debating the the procedural issue. Uh, these people have come before us with their application. They're taking their best shot. I think we should take our best shot and rule on what's before us. Uh, the information uh, before us, I think, is sketchy, but we've acted on other uh, applications for variance in the past on sketchy information. And we've, I mean, it's their responsibility to convince us to rule in their favor. And that's what they're here tonight to do, to, to convince us. And if there is any of us that aren't convinced, then we vote that way. I mean, we're, we're doing the best. If we, if we vote this down and they come back with a substantially new uh, application, 
within a year, we can vote on it. If it's the same one, obviously we can. We've got to wait a year. But their, their shot is they want to have an east wing and a west wing. I mean, that's what I'm looking at right now, and that's what they're, vo what they're asking us to vote on tonight. Granted, we just got this information, but I mean, I, I don't want to see them c keep coming back month after month with, with new information, because we're getting, quite honestly, we're getting our minds uh, scrambled on this. So I, I just, you know, I'll just say, I just soon go ahead on the information that's presented to us, and I'd like to hear from the builder to clarify some questions. But I mean, I'd, I'd like to go ahead. Let me just observe that both the applicant and the opponents have asked us to go ahead and act tonight, so uh, that's consistent with what I've heard people wanting. Bob? What? I echo Mr. Patati's well-stated positions. Exactly, I agree with 100%. Yeah. Ann? I, I missed your last statement, just before Mine? yours. Uh, <laughs> What did I say? <laughs> oh, that both the applicant and the, uh, and the opposition, if we call them that, have said they would want us to act on this tonight. I'll, I'll state for the record that I'm uncomfortable um, for the reasons that both of you have, have stated in, in acting on, on information with legal, unresolved legal implications in terms of process without getting those clarified first, particularly since um, I'm not about to skim read this now. And, and then vote on it one way or the other. Um, so I would certainly be in favor of tabling it until we get those questions resolved. Um, well, somebody make a motion at one kind or another. I'll, 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 I'll make that motion uh, to table this until the next meeting. Okay. Is there a second for that motion? I'll second it. Uh, that's a non-discussable item, and I'm sure we've pretty well discussed it to death anyway. So all those in favor of that motion, please indicate by saying I, or raising your hand. Those opposed, three to two, Mr. Fustashi and Mr. Cronin. Um, all I can say to both parties is enjoy your vacation, but I hope somebody else can cover for you. And, uh, and I'm sorry it's gotten complicated here, but I just can't see any way out of this. So. What is your date of your next meeting? Whatever the fourth Tuesday in August is. 20, 24? 24. And I, I'm regretting the fact that this seemed to go around in circles and everything, but frankly, uh, I had some problems in my own mind understanding all this when we came in here, and, and Mr. Traster just tripled my confusion uh, with, the, with the proposals they made, and I think we're doing the best thing for everybody. Well, I, I think you, you clearly can't do, you can't deal with what they gave you today. I mean, it's not clear from this plan which view, which street we're looking at, mm -hmm. which side we're looking at, whether well, this is the front or the back of the yeah. structure. Okay, that's fine. But the, let me, let me. So we'll take this up again at the next meeting, and, uh, and I assume without even bringing this up, and I'm going to bring it up anyway, Mr. Tracer, the board will have I think, I necessary think. materials well in advance, and Mr. Lurie or his uh, team will have it well let in me, advance as well. Just say, I think, it's, I think it's unfair to the Lakemans to have this thing go on again and have to have, bring back another lawyer again, uh, you know, for another evening, uh, when in fact it's very clear on the merits that this variance cannot be granted. Well, that may be Mr. Laurie, but whether it's very clear or not is up to the board to decide, and so far we haven't gotten to that point yet, so. The, the uh, law court has said over and over again that any reason, any use of the property, 900 square feet, whatever, is enough. And they've turned down uh, umpteen times point the maximum yeah. use. Okay, okay. You're, you're basically uh, making an argument which you're willing, you know, more than, uh, uh, welcome to make in writing if you'd like, because the reason I'm doing this is because I'm presented with two opposing views about law, which we need a lawyer's opinion for, and we'll get our lawyer to do that. And as Mr. Keneally pointed out, there's even contradictions with the book that we use as our Bible from the Maine Municipal Association. So uh, thank you for the suggestion. We'll think about writing something for the next meeting. I'm sorry, I didn't get you. Thank you for the suggestion. I will discuss writing something for the next meeting, so they won't have to bring a lawyer back. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Chair, could I have some direction on what you'd like court office to do um, in regards to anything that may you might want answered or uh, advertised? Well, I think clearly we, uh, from the discussion tonight, which you can pick out of the minutes, and you and I can talk about it afterward, but we, we need some help from our attorney on at least two issues that have come up and that Mr. Traster raised and that have not been resolved to my satisfaction, despite Mr. Lurie's confidence of the direction. And, uh, 
so it would be helpful for him to weigh in on that. And I would suggest that you discuss the situation with him as well and decide what the safest way to deal with the revisions to the application is in terms of public notice. Uh, Thank you. And I think several board members have expressed concern that given the significant change on the west side that perhaps safety suggests advertising it again, but I will certainly take Mike's view on that. And it would fit into one or two categories, either old business or new application, mm -hmm. I believe. So Either way, you get the word out. And, and, and that's, by the way, is another question that, that uh, Mr. Firtasi has raised, which I think ought to be presented to the attorney, and that is the issue of whether um, this kind of a change, in fact, requires a new application. I mean, you and I have an opinion, but I think it's a good question to ask because it is significantly different and maybe, maybe better, maybe worse, but it's very different. Um, and then whether you have or not, I, I personally would like to have you take a look at the uh, septic application issue that Mr. Lurie raised uh, because that didn't come up at the last meeting, as I recall. It was taken at face value and not discussed, and uh, I don't know that it has any impact or not, but I'd appreciate your input on that uh, in our next packet. Anything else that the board members want to be sure gets dealt with? Go ahead. I Go ahead, where, where this is lo located so close to the, the right of way, um, do we get the um, public safety involved in this for comment as far as uh, emergency vehicles accessing uh, this, uh, this private right of way? I mean, it's, this, this house is, is right at the beginning of the right of way, and uh, should they review the application? That's something the board probably should decide. I, I okay. I throw that out for a question because we did have one earlier uh, last year or so uh, where it was close and unusually close to the to the right away i think i'd like to hear some comments from uh, public safety on this um, the other thing i'd like to see and i don't know whether you touched on it it's hard to hear over here um, what they're doing with some dimensions that we can see uh, much larger than the than the eight by eleven uh, what they presented us the first time was was adequate it showed what they were doing, so I'd like to see that. Uh, and uh, the other thing is, um, uh, Henry, did you say anything about these uh, um, legal cases uh, that were uh, referenced in the? Uh, yeah, I've asked uh, Bruce to have both of them. Mike look at two separate issues, in, as presented by Mr. Treister and uh, challenged by our on-board attorney here, Mr. Keneally, and and. Uh, See, you know, how he reads the current law and the current uh, court rulings and give us some opinion on that before we deal with this again. I, you know, the other thing is uh, we've talked about hardship and uh, I disputed what was discussed tonight on, on the definition of a hardship. I'm wondering if maybe we should have a, a, another definition or at least a definition we can hang a hat on. What, what constitutes a hardship? Not well, being able to sell the property? The ordinance defines hardship, I believe. Uh, well, <laughs> I think the board has pointed out in one on one occasion that it's in each individual case. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's... Uh, well, okay, you can argue one case, but, you know, two of us are thinking three, di three different things. So uh, maybe Attorney Hill can come back with some type of a definition of a hardship that we might you know consider. Say. <laughs> on, well, this is, this is a di different situation where they bought the house as opposed to owning it and not being able to enjoy it as much as they, as they may. In fact, I, I would appreciate learning whether there was any more in this 1995 case law uh, that talks more about what hardship is. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the paragraph D in the letter from Ms. Tracer. Um, he told us what it's not, but I'd like to see if that same case law may identify more of what the current uh, precedents are for what hardship is, too. There was some of some of some of the, the things you're asking is is not new territory. Um, well, it is for you know, me. At the, at the workshop we had, we we did discuss discuss some of them, and mm -hmm. I think the board does know the answer to, to a few of those questions. Well, I think at the workshop, though, Bruce, we were guided largely by what's in here. Oh, I'm not disputing and what you brought up. Uh, we're being presented now with case law, which is more recent than what's in here. That, and that wasn't that isn't what I'm disputing, but. Okay. 
Which I have to say is a large reason why I was uncomfortable about this because I think there's larger implications right. than just this case and based on our history. So either we're misreading something or there's something different here that we haven't seen before. So uh, unfortunately, somebody had to get caught in the middle. Uh, with that, we'll move on to the next yeah, agenda item. I, just, uh, I, I would feel very much more comfortable if there was an entirely new application submitted, new forms, new requests, new advertisements. As, if we're not going to go ahead with the old application. I think we all the public to put down, the applicant should put down exactly what they want to they do and advertise it as such. But you've already tabled. I've already tabled this oh, one. I'm just expressing yeah. sentiment. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I did ask Bruce to, to sort of run that question by my kill because that's really one of the, the dilemmas here. Does this kind of a change constitute what amounts to a new application or not? And if indeed the answer to that is yes, then there'll be two applications before yeah. the board, one tabled old business and one new. Yeah. We can dispose of that with no problem. Okay. In answer to uh, Mr. Neely's uh, uh, concerns, I, I read a case I think the date of it, but it had to do with Booth Bay Harbor, where a person's house was washed away in a storm, and uh, he applied to build it and didn't meet zone, wetland uh, zoning uh, or oceanfront zoning setback requirements, and uh, they wouldn't let him build. And uh, he appealed, and, and the I'll get the, I'll get a copy of the case and send it to you. But the uh, Supreme Court ruled that if he could put a, a, a trailer, a vacation trailer, on the land, that constituted a reasonable return. Hardship is very difficult to prove in this state based upon that case. I hope Mike Hill wasn't planning on a vacation anytime soon. <laughs> all right. Uh, thank you all. I'm sorry for uh, the dilemma here, but uh, we have to struggle through it, I guess. Uh, the next item on the agenda, if I could find it. There, there is no other new business, as far as I know, uh, of a permit nature. We do have communications. Uh, let me, let me just mention in passing, because somebody else brought it up and asked me a question and with regard to our discussion with the planning board on just this issue, for one aspect of it anyway, uh, in which we met in the back room and talked about the question of uh, practical difficulty and asked them to consider uh, asking the council to go ahead and, and adopt an ordinance that would reflect that new change in the state statute. Uh, it's my understanding that the, uh, well, you remember that at the last meeting, uh, the planning director and Bruce uh, presented us with a written proposal which was intended to put into some legitimate language uh, for the planning board to consider their interpretation of the discussion at the joint meeting and our incorporating our desires. And they did so, and to put a fine point on it, uh, the planning board, I should put this, did not recognize the discussion, I guess, felt as though what was being presented to them didn't, as they remembered it, at least reflect what we talked about, and uh, raised some concerns about it, and uh, it kind of got set aside. Uh, at a second meeting, it, it came up again, apparently. I talked to Maureen McGovern, the planner, this morning to get the latest update, because Bruce wasn't there. And uh, it's my understanding that at that meeting, several of the board members, having given more thought to it and read it more carefully and given more thought to the issue, decided that it shouldn't be overlooked so quickly, but that, in fact, there have been cases that raise this issue uh, and that the planning board ought to go into it further. So as I understand it, they asked uh, the staff to provide them with some data about the number of variances, the kind of variances, what the patterns were basically That's in recent times. And Marine and Bruce are in the tail end of pulling that together. And it's my further understanding that uh, uh, that they are not limiting their consideration in terms of how to address this problem to the uh, practical difficulty language, but are also being asked to look at whether or not, in fact, the ordinance itself is flawed. That is to say that, uh, that we have a substantial portion of the Cape which was built long before the current ordinance and in some cases before any ordinance. And if we're to have any sense of equity about people being able to improve their property within reason, that 
perhaps the ordinance itself, at least in those districts or those segments of the community, needs to be revisited as another way of looking at it rather than doing, than doing it through uh, modifying the variance process. Well, and, so, and as I pointed out to uh, Maureen, uh, that does take care of probably the majority. Majority, not all. Which could be 51%, yeah. but it, 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 you'd still be faced with the same situation, just not yeah. so often. Yeah. So th they, they're, they're open apparently now to at least uh, seriously looking at both of those issues. When they get the data report from uh, the staff, uh, they will be bringing that up. And I think there's a meeting coming up I'm not soon. Sure when it's coming. A couple of weeks, anyway. Uh, and we'll get no more than where they plan to go with it. So that's my best uh, updating that I can give you. The other issue that we have tabled several times uh, is the one about the requirement that we established a year ago that a applicant site plan be at a minimum a mortgage inspection plan. And uh, as I recall, that discussion came up because uh, it was we're not we weren't 100 percent sure that that was even enough. <laughs> I mean, I, I I believe everybody. Nobody's said anything that would lead me to believe that that any board member thinks that that wasn't a good idea, that we have gained a lot from that policy. Mm -hmm. But I think the question has been raised a couple of times now whether, in fact, that's a uh, in-depth enough survey to be adequate for our purposes. Well, I can and tell you that the survey companies um, do those for mortgage inspections and they don't like them to be used for anything but. Not to say they wouldn't do it, uh, but that the accuracy uh, isn't necessarily there. Uh, it's certainly, in good many cases, better than a, a napkin drawing. Um, but there are inaccuracies, and there will be problems in the future with people getting variances based on those, those drawings. Um, my only question was what I had submitted from, I think it was Delorier, <coughs> about the next step with the site plan. My question was to the board whether that would be something they'd want to consider. The problem is that that runs somewhere around, what, 450 bucks, and, and politically that could be a problem to require applicants to spend that kind of money. First, if we look at the cost of the additions that are coming before us in the thousands, this is an insignificant amount. It's less than 1% in a lot of cases. And it will uh, eliminate a lot of embarrassments or problems down the road if they come to, to sell their property. And this is why I was an advocate for this, uh, what, two years ago, that uh, we're getting a lot of expansions. And most of these people are maximizing their additions on their lots. And uh, I was hoping that we could eliminate uh, repeat visits to the zoning board, uh, and that's why I was looking for some type of a, a, uh, a survey, whether it be the mortgage survey or the full-blown Class D survey. Um, most of them are under $1,000, and again, most of them are uh, a, a small amount of what it would cost, uh, or what, what the overall cost is. In some cases, maybe they could find that they uh, could get a larger uh, addition. I think a lot of them are limited uh, to the uh, to the setbacks, but again, it, it would eliminate a lot of problems uh, in the future. And I think we had one right over here and uh, towards Crescent Beach that uh, uh, was just so far off base that I mean I think a lot of people were convinced at that point that we do need some type of a survey. Um, Joe, have you had a chance, I don't know what did you had a chance to look at this lawyer's letter that mm -hmm. uh, was provided to us dated May 17th? Mm -hmm. He talks about a sketch plan, what I take, which I take to be some sort of mid -plan. Well, that's going on. You're taking a survey and expanding it and reducing it down, drawing the house on the, uh, uh, on the survey and all, on, on the, um, uh, well, on what you have before you, I think it is. Uh, we've seen several of them. Seventeen, he says. Yeah, this is this isn't a survey, but it's a sketch plan that they'll that they'll pretty much guarantee, based on what they find out there. If indeed they can't find pins, then they won't do the sketch plan, and they'll tell them that, that if you want accurate, you have to do a survey. Mm -hmm. So either they guarantee it without doing a full-blown survey as a sketch plan, 
or they tell the applicant that we won't guarantee it because you need more research. So if you get one of them before you, um, you, you can almost be assured that for the purposes of what you need to look at, that it's accurate. That's, that's, that's basically what that's all about. And that's, that, that makes a pretty good document for $450. Um, he indicates that the mortgage inspection could be as little as $125, sketch plan $400, and an average survey could be as much as $2,000. So, and I'm not, I mean, obviously I think we need to take cost into account, but the most important thing is that we are sure we're making the right decisions, that seems to me. It's, it's certainly a better, a much greater, uh, more accuracy than the mortgage inspection plan, but there again, mortgage inspection plan is better than a napkin in, in a lot of cases, so it's whatever the, I think the board's comfortable with. Uh, we were concerned about the expense. That was a concern of, uh, well, certainly one board member that's not here this evening. Um, I'm also concerned about the expense, but I'm also concerned about uh, problems that might occur if they don't do it. Uh, we had one place, uh, one applicant, that uh, his garage was too close to the property line, and I don't know how that was resolved, but I, I think it was moved, and that was a tremendous expense, and they could have saved that, uh, that expense and uh, heartache if, if, we, if we had the uh, uh, survey, mortgage survey. And that was a tight one. I think that was, what, three feet from the property line. So, you know, maybe you should put some limitations on it or, or could put some limitations on it. If it's less than 10 feet from the property line, you do the full-blown survey. Well, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not advocating that, but I'm saying that we really should have something in place to eliminate. But you can uh, have the same problem whether it's 20 feet I or agree. 3 feet in, in that if I, it's not accurate, then whatever they got approval for is uh, null and void. This, this board has been very forgiving. <laughs> well, let me ask this. If... if and I'd like to hear from other board members. If uh, if you're not satisfied, that's the first threshold. If you're not satisfied that our current policy is giving us enough information, then are you prepared to uh, adopt the sketch plan, accepting the fact, from what I understood you to be saying, that if a pin or a, a stone monument can't be found, then you still have a napkin sketch unless you go to the full-blown survey, is that right? Well, I would think you'd have to... Because they won't care. That, you'd have to move up, not down. Yeah, so I, because they won't uh, support or endorse a sketch plan as being accurate. So if you choose to move up to a $400 sketch plan, you may or may not be open to the possibility, depending on the situation, that it would be $1,000 or $2,000 survey in the absence of a pin or a monument. With no guarantee that they'll get the variance. With no guarantee they'll get the variance. <laughs> so, I mean, not to say that should be, as the lawyers put it, dispositive, but it is a, a conundrum we could uh, be creating for ourselves. We want to know what the potential impact would be before changing it. Yeah, I'm sort of two minds about it. Uh, one, yeah, it is expensive. And two, it's not always applicable. In my neighborhood, and I'm sure Acres, uh, I was told that it was laid out by architects, not engineers, and none of the lot lines match up, and God knows where anybody's lot line is. There's, there's some fins, there's, there's a few, but there's not a lot. And uh, People attempting to survey their property uh, didn't determine it. So it may not help you to make that decision if they can't find any pins, and if, in fact, the lot lines don't match up. Uh, on the other hand, I've been at a number of hearings over the years uh, where somebody's trying to sell their house and the bank won't, uh, won't loan on it because uh, they're over the line here, they're over the line there. There was one case down uh, on Mitchell Road, and Mitchell Road is, is in the wrong place, technically speaking, that, it, that this person's house is much closer to the right-of-way, but not closer to Mitchell Road. <laughs> now, uh, the poor guy's trying to sell his house, and all of a sudden the whole thing falls through at the last minute because there's... Uh, uh, Mitchell Road's in the wrong place. And uh, if it would help prevent those things from happening, then, then I think it's valuable. But it may not be valuable in all cases, given the fact that uh, not everything is, is plumb level and true. 
So does that lead you to a proposal that we get to? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, my it's about it. <laughs> I'm just going considerations. Uh, it, it'd be nice to have some of it. Somebody that doesn't have to run run down here and uh, the last minute when he thinks he's sold his house and moving to Oswego to uh, and know if the whole thing falls through because his, uh, his lot lines are. In the if the, if the board would like, I could do a little survey of other towns to see what they accept, um, to see, you know, to add some weight to whatever decision you might decide, if that's something that would be helpful. I could give you answers right now on several communities. South Portland wants a Class D survey which on, any, the, on anything. Which is the yeah, full... I think Scarborough does a site... Class D is the full board. Except the sketch plan. I think they've moved to that. Yeah. Um, there are towns that are the class D is they two thousand dollars. Well, it's not two thousand dollars. It's it's it can be up to two thousand. That's even for a variance application. Uh, that is for a building. Up. That is for a building permit of any nature, addition, new construction, or whatever. So yes, if you're going in for a variance, you would need that. You would need that also. They didn't, they didn't back off on that recently. No. To a, uh, no. No. I'm still paying. For, <laughs> I'm still paying for Class D surveys. The voices. They're, they're still asking for them. For a building permit. Yes. A Class D is a certified architectural stamp survey. Engineer stamp. Right there. That's what we have for the previous application. It's a class that, that doesn't have a surveyor seal on it, or does it? That's well, a, I don't a, see it. It's signed by Dan Delfonso. That's a survey. This is a survey. Uh, I cannot see an embossed seal on this. The, I've uh, seen the original. There is an embossed seal. Yeah. Um, and this is, this is a substantial one because of the property. And quite honestly, I don't think that I would, I mean, where it's so tight on this, on this right of way, I mean, this was beneficial, extremely beneficial. Uh, as far as I was concerned, um, several of the other. I don't want to be in, put in a position where I have to decide who needs to and who doesn't. If it, it should be a policy, I believe, in, from from my standpoint, to either have to require a certain certain standard for everybody or or or, or not at all. I think I'd like to see a survey, sketch plan, or a survey. Well, it, what I was trying to get at a minute ago was a suggestion, I guess, when I was posing an informative question, and that is if the board wants to move away from the current policy, could we have a, a policy that says a sketch plan will be necessary, but if there are no pins or monuments to establish uh, comfort on the part of the uh, surveyor for a sketch plan, then a full survey, class D survey would be required. So that we don't get a thousand-dollar requirement where a thousand-dollar requirement isn't needed, uh, and, uh, and and I think that would be adequate for you. And I mean, yeah. the surveyor says there's pins or there isn't, and if there isn't, then you go do Either it. They'll do a sketch plan and, and stand behind it, or, or they'll exactly. they'll tell their their client that there's more needs to be done. Mm. Suppose somebody wants to go straight up in the original footprint, so it's not close to the property line, but uh, lots of Changes in setbacks, and you know, you got to advertise that setback, though. Yeah. Because it's an expansion. So if you advertise wrong because it isn't accurate, then you're in the same boat as, as if you're doing a lateral <coughs> expansion. Does that I'm compromise uh, make people comfortable? Is this something that that, that that the board can vote to do, or is it something we have to clear with? Of this on tape. Please. With the town manager, or, uh, I'm not sure whether whether the board can just do that. Tell me why we couldn't. I don't know. I'm just I'm just raising <laughs> issue. You're a judicial body. This is a legislative. Yeah. Matter. Yeah, but I think. Well, no, wait a minute. Should we kiss the tape on here? Where would the policy Hang on just changed? See. That's the question we're trying to talk about here. <laughs> I'm, I'm mid-tape, though, and I want to make sure it's on tape. Uh. Bruce, while we're off the record, I've got some information for you over here. <laughs> a couple of photos and a letter. <laughs> I haven't got the originals back yet. Uh, These are the originals. Yeah. These are the originals. Originals. Are 
<laughs> Nothing a TV person hates worse, worse than dead looks air. Looks like an Andrew White uh, <laughs> print. Yeah, it does like. Make sure they don't disappear. Are we on? Okay. Uh, the, the question Bruce asked, uh, why don't you just go ahead and ask it, because you weren't on mic at the time. Is, is this a policy decision that the board can make, or do we need to clear this with, with the town manager? Is that the question you were asking? Well, my question is, where is the policy written now? Is there a written policy? I don't know the answer to that. There's an application form. And I think that before it was, there had to be a, a, a there always has been, have, had to be a plan that, that, that shows uh, the lot, the site plan to, to a scale, and, and the applicant has to know that it has to be accurate. Uh, when we moved into the mortgage inspection plan, it wasn't so much of an issue um, because the cost was still fairly low. But now that we're moving up into something with a little more cost, um, I think we probably ought to have that question answered whether um, it's just something the board can, can do or or we need to clear it with somebody else. Well, I certainly don't have any problem with running <coughs> by the administration because, mm -hmm. it, and in fact, I wouldn't have any problem with putting on an agenda for a public discussion at a, you know, at a meeting where people knew it was coming up and what the proposal itself was. So if, uh, I'd encourage you to do that, in fact, uh, to see if anybody comes out and objects or, can, or has suggestions. Uh, however, it seems to me the board has some, ought to have some freedom to establish its own standards for evaluation, and that's all we're talking about here. I can I can check into how that all can take place mm -hmm. if you'd like. But if you know if in fact that should be a decision made in the town manager's office, fine. That's no I don't think anybody would object to that. It's just that would be our recommendation then, and to the extent that uh, it's not accepted, that's the way things go. It's sort of the applicant's responsibility. If we grant a variance of 15 feet from the lot line, he builds within a, a, a 12 feet of the lot line. I'm not sure what his recourse is. He said, "Keep me approved 15, and you built within 12 because you didn't put your, uh, you, you uh, didn't know where your lot line was." Now, what happens then is then the person comes back and has an emergency variance request and can't sell his house. And then you, you're, you're a little hesitant to deny him, but it's still his responsibility. Yeah. People have made to take swimming pools out. Well, I, I'm I'm hearing that the board feels this approach is a sensible one uh, of requiring the sketch plan and failing the existence of a pin to allow the surveyor to guarantee that then the requirement for a class D survey. And so I suggest, Bruce, that you run that by Mike uh, McGovern and that you uh, uh, put it on the agenda for the next meeting and attach the written proposal the way you think it ought to be worded and let people be aware of it. And if they want to come in and comment or send written notice or something that they object to it, then we'll at least have that information. And then we'll know who really has the power to adopt or not adopt, and we can act accordingly. So you want me to put it on the agenda as a, as a business item? Sure. Or, or Instead of us, so we can vote it, yeah, and we can vote it with the knowledge that People have had a chance to comment, and that the administration has had a chance to comment. Okay. okay. Would it be a proposal to change the uh, application requirements? Was well, that, that's that the was question. Whether, 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 whether. Is that what we're voting? Who, 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 who makes those requirements? Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, I mean, is that what, what's, what's being determined? That a requirement of an application for variance or a setback or, or a uh, relocation includes this? That's. It's sort of the implementation of, 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 the, uh, of the policy. Um, Legislators pass laws and the agencies develop the, the implementation policies. Yeah. It sounds like it's an implementation policy. Well, I don't see this as a law. I see this as an application requirement. So I think your point's valid that it is really part of an administrative procedure. Anyway, let's not spend the night arguing about it. We just get some guidance and we'll act on it at the next meeting in a formal way and based on the information we have. Either just make it a recommendation to the, the town manager or adopt it as our policy or whatever seems appropriate and, uh, with benefit of public comment. Anything else on uh, 
the board members' minds before we get out of here? Two quick things. Yep. Uh, one, we should probably have a next um, next meeting. We'll have another board member, I would assume. I'm hoping so. They are interviewing now, I believe. Yeah, and I would wonder if it might be appropriate, especially given the fact that we're going to ask town council to give us some advice on some things to have a short workshop before the next meeting. That's a good point. Uh, what, was the, what was the comment? Well, the suggestion was that because it seems likely we'll have a new member uh, at the next meeting. And given that we have asked Mike some questions that are of import to many of us, Jack's suggestion was that maybe if we got together half hour, 45 minutes early before the meeting next time with Mike, both to sort of introduce the new member and to get direct uh, input from Mike on the legal questions, uh, that that might be helpful. The only problem is, Jack, I don't think we want, we don't want to have a private meeting. Well, I guess we could have a private meeting with our attorney, but one is you recommendation of writing. Yeah, generic. Yeah. There wouldn't be no discussion. Yeah. Specific. Yeah, I don't think we'd, we'd have to be careful about getting into the case in particular, but, understand. but the generic questions that the case raises, mm -hmm. we could talk about. Uh, okay. And, or we could make that meeting open to the public. We've done that before. Well, I think it would be useful to let Mike know ahead of time so we can study the questions before it comes to the workshop. And he can keep Oops. us on track as far as keeping it narrow, too. Well, I hope and, and expect to get a written opinion from him on the number of questions we've asked. Okay. Tonight. Would you like? And I would think that would be more. Council present at the meeting. Might not be a bad idea, depending on well, especially depending on how his uh, word comes down. But if he's going to be here anyway, might as well stay because it's going to be the first item on the agenda. So after we get through picking Alice apart, and uh, <laughs> uh, so you might as well stay. And uh, I don't expect Laurie will be back, but his partner presumably will be and, uh, and certainly uh, the applicant's attorney will be here so yeah this turned out to be a much bigger uh, problem than I ever thought it was going to be so mm -hmm. yeah, this kind of problem can be we should avoid it if, if instead of tabling applications I know we used to vote to yeah. allow people to withdraw the application yeah, just a second uh, let me just declare the official meeting closed and uh, and uh,